In the previous sessions, we discussed about general features and structures of epithelial glands and specific features of salivary glands. In this session, I will be summarizing the whole of epithelial glands. The epithelial glands can be defined as the organized collections of secretory cells. The functions are it synthesizes, stores and releases the proteins, lipids and carbohydrates. It is classified mainly based on duct system into endocrine and exocrine glands. The endocrine glands are ductless glands where the secretory hormones are poured into the surrounding rich capillary network directly. The composition of the endocrine glands are uh, formed by epithelial cells, reticular fibers and the fenestrated capillaries. They are classified into two types, cord or clump type and follicular type. Now in the cord or clump type, the cells are arranged irregularly in the form of cords or clumps. Now, in the follicular type, the cells are arranged in single layer around a lumen. Now, this single layer of cells around the lumen together is called as the follicle. Now, outside the follicle that is surrounding the basement membrane is the rich network of capillaries. Okay, so the whole follicle is surrounded by capillaries where the secretions are poured into. It is poured into the lumen and from the lumen into the capillaries. Now coming to the exocrine gland, the second type of the epithelial glands. These are glands with ducts. Now the secretions of the exocrine glands are poured through the ducts onto the surface. Now, these exocrine glands are further classified based on the number of cells into unicellular and multicellular glands. The unicellular glands is a single cell. As the name suggests, it is the single cell which is called as the goblet cells interspersed in between the columnar cells. So, it can be numerously found in the respiratory system and digestive system mainly. The multicellular gland has two parts. The lower part or the basal part is the secretory part which has uh, the secretory cells and the superficial part is the duct which is surrounded by the ductal cells. Now, the multicellular gland, okay, multicellular gland is subclassified based on numerous factors. Now, based on the branching of ducts, it is classified into simple or compound gland. Simple is, it has only one duct, Compound, it has numerous branching of the ducts. Now, based on the secretory portions, on how the secretory cells are arranged, it is classified into tubular, acinar and tubulo acinar. Now, in tubular, the secretory cells are arranged in the form of tube. In the acinar part, the secretory cells are arranged in the form of a round structure or a oval structure. In tubulo acinar, it has both tubular part and acinar part. Now, on the combination of ducts and secretory portion, okay, together it is classified into simple tubular, simple acinar, compound tubular, compound acinar and compound tubulo acinar. In simple tubular, it has both the single duct and the tubular form of the secretory portion. Simple acinar, single duct and the secretory portion is in the form of acinus. 
compound tubula it is the structure is uh, it has tubular form and branching ducts in compound acinar it has branching ducts and the secretory portion is in the form of acini then compound tubula acinar both ducts and the tubulo acinar they are uh, branching and it has both tubular form and the secretory portion now based on the nature of secretion it is subclassified into that is multicellular gland is subclassified into mucus and serous gland now here in the mucus gland the secretion is in the form of viscous and it is slimy the serous as clear watery secretion that is in the serous gland now based on the mechanism of secretion this is nature what we discussed that is viscous and clearly secretion is the based on the nature of secretion and depending upon the mechanism of secretion it is classified into merocrine apocrine and holocrine gland in merocrine gland what is happening is the cell is intact but only the secretion is released in the form of the secretory vesicles which goes to the cell membrane it merges with it and then released outside the cell okay now in apocrine gland what happens the cells along with the secretory part is pinched off the apical portion of the cell is pinched off along with the secretory portion and uh, it is released as the secretion in holocrine the whole cell disintegrates and forms a part of the secretion okay coming to the last uh, classification that is uh, based on the development from which germ layer it develops it is classified as ectodermal gland mesodermal gland and endodermal gland so as the name suggests the ectodermal gland is uh, the gland which develops from the ectoderm then mesodermal gland is the gland which develops from the mesoderm and endodermal gland is the gland which develops from the endoderm okay so that is about the uh, general structure of the epithelial glands so based on all this based on all this the we can um, uh, see how all these uh, glands are arranged that is uh, the uh, type of glands which can be seen in the structure okay how is it arranged so the there are uh, many epithelial glands which are present around the oral cavity as salivary glands now there are uh, major and minor salivary glands which are present all around the oral cavity they produce saliva so the major and uh, minor salivary glands are uh, the uh, parotid then the submandibular and the sublingual glands and minor salivary glands can be the palatal glands the lingual glands the palatine glands okay so palatoglossal glands so all these forms the minor salivary glands including von ebner's glands in the tongue now the saliva includes the water okay electrolytes mucus enzymes phosphate and antibodies which forms the composition of the saliva the, the functions of the saliva are the digestion lubrication and protection it also acts as a buffer and when the saliva passes through the ducts it is also modified okay so the ductal cells modifies the saliva which is produced in the acini 
Now coming to the general organization of the salivary glands, it is composed of parenchyma, stroma and duct system. The parenchyma, it includes the mucus acini, serous acini, the serous demilune and myoepithelial cells. Now the stroma is nothing but the connective tissue. Okay. It is uh, formed by the connective tissue. It is in the form of capsule which surrounds the whole gland and from the capsule the septa arise which goes to form the interlobular septa and it has intralobular connective tissue which is present inside the lobules. So the connective tissue which is present inside the lobules which is supporting the parenchyma is called as the intralobular connective tissue. Now coming to the third part that is the duct system. The ducts which arise from the acini or the tubular part of the secretory portion is called as the intralobular ducts. Now intralobular ducts has two parts. The initial part arising from the secretory portion is the intercalated duct and these intercalated ducts join to form the striated duct. Now the striated ducts, they join to form the interlobular ducts which pass in between the lobules in the interlobular connective tissue along with the blood vessels and these ducts, they join to form the terminal single main duct which opens into the oral cavity okay now coming to the classification of the salivary glands major salivary glands we are uh, focusing on the major salivary glands okay so this is classified based on the type of acini amount of connective tissue and number of excretory ducts. So the type of acini can be serous or mucous acini. Amount of connective tissue might vary as few as possible to the abundant maximum connective tissue and the number of excretory ducts from absent to numerous ducts. Okay, so in serous gland, the main features are it is predominantly okay as serous acini. Now, it has less connective tissue, okay, both intralobular and interlobular connective tissue is very, very less. And uh, coming to the duct system, in the serous gland, there are numerous intralobular and interlobular ducts because of its length okay it is very lengthy in the mucous gland okay the specific features okay or the unique features to the mucous gland is is it is predominated by the mucous acini even if there are few serous acini along with the uh, serous demilunes okay then uh, coming to the connective tissue, it has moderate intralobular connective tissue and abundant or well-developed interlobular connective tissue. So the connective tissue is present in abundance both in the lobules and in between the lobules. The duct system, it has few intercalated ducts because the intercalated ducts are very short. You can see the intercalated ducts or you may not see the intercalated ducts in the section. It has numerous non-striated ducts. Non-striated ducts is equivalent to the striated ducts which is present in the serous and mixed gland and numerous intra interlobular ducts. Okay. Now coming to the features of the mixed gland. It has both serous mucus and serous demilune. Okay, the acini. But here, uh, mainly it is uh, uh, serous acini is found in the mixed gland. 
and few mucosacinae along with the serous demilunes. Now the connective tissue, uh, it is uh, moderate interlobular connective tissue and uh, well developed interlobular connective tissue. The duct system has a few intercalated ducts and more of striated ducts and uh, the interlobular ducts. Now, as you observe here, the main uh, difference between the three glands is uh, the intercalated ducts. Okay, the intercalated ducts are uh, numerous in the serous gland. It is... Uh, few very less number of uh, ducts in the uh, mucus and uh, few intercalated ducts in the mixed glands okay so with this we are uh, uh, concluding the epithelial glands okay to conclude we have uh, okay now before concluding uh, there is uh, another uh, structure Another feature we have to discuss in the epithelial glands that is the clinical anatomy. Now clinical anatomy includes sialuria, xerostomia and the tumors of the salivary glands. Sialuria is the uh, excessive secretion, xerostomia is decreased secretion okay and uh, the tumors of salivary glands. So with this we will conclude uh, the epithelial glands. Okay, so um, see you in the next section that is uh, in how to draw the salivary glands microstructure. Okay, thank you. See you there.